Hello everybody and welcome to our latest short film on life and learning here at Mayfield and as I did with the weekly news I'm here in 5MH and I'm going to be telling you all about learning laps and marking podiums and I'm stood here under the island in year five so you can see me dressed very nicely with the ivy and I've got a picture of Lewis Hamilton in my hand here as well as I take you through what actually is a learning lap and a marking podium. So, a learning lap. Now, in each class we talk about the idea of stages of learning. So the children think about the kind of behaviours for learning that they'll need to show a particular point in a lesson or in a unit or in a theme, whatever, whatever you would think about. Here is the learning lap, and you'll find copies of this uh, on the website. Learning lap has got three elements to it. Part one is the green phase. We call it GTK. That means get to know. That's all about absorbing new learning. What is it we're learning about? What does it look like? What does it entail? And crucially, what vocabulary do we gather and what we can discuss about it? It's filling your brain at this point, immersing in new things, like jumping into the swimming pool for the first time. That's what get to know means, part one. Part two is OTU, which means over to you. This is where the children take all that new knowledge, vocabulary, everything that they've stored, and they start to practice and to use it in class. It's about them engaging independently with their work. And that always follows get to know. And Lewis Hamilton here helps us as we go through because we place Lewis on the track at the relevant point. So we can remind the children whereabouts they are. Hence, learning lap. Now part three is the most important part in our view at the moment, which is 3RP. And that means refine and polish. We worked very hard with the children in the first 15 days back after lockdown to develop the idea of dealing with feedback and refining and improving work. The most important part of learning is learning from mistakes and learning how to upskill and take work forward. We can all start with a blank piece of paper, but chances are it's going to be the worst version that we do first. What we teach the children is the importance of refine, polish and improve. So sector three, although it comes last, actually fits in over and over and over again. It's so important to improving learning. When we talk about progress, this is key. If you want what we call attainment, which is at a moment in time how well they've done, it's probably that. But how we achieve progress comes from part three, refine and polish. That's how we show we're moving forward. And our maths, our English, our when I grow up work is all built around this learning lab principle. New knowledge, immerse, get the vocabulary there, have your first attempt, have your first go, and then the real progress, the refine, the polish, the improvement. This is already having a real impact in what we're doing. It's quite a challenge for the children because to upskill something is not easy, it's not natural. It's not always the easiest thing to respond to feedback or to marking, but it's absolutely essential. And the children are gradually getting used to that cycle. And we spent a lot of those first 15 days back on refine and polishing readiness for the summer term. So if you ask your children about learning lap, this is the learning lap. And we've got the checkup flag there, which do you know right? That's the end of that particular section. And that's Lewis Hamilton's role in our school. So I'm going to put him on refine and polish at the moment. There we go. Learning lap. Move this way. Elsewhere in class, we've been pushing the importance of marking. Now, teachers for, for generations thought, I've got to mark everything that moves. But actually, marking is about the right style of marking at the right time. Making sure that the feedback that we give to children is always useful and is always acted upon. It's very easy to mark everything in the same way, to tick it and give it a stand and say well done. But it's got to be useful for learning, otherwise it's just a dead activity. So what we've devised is a three-step marking podium, which has bronze, 
silver and gold, just as it would at the Olympic Games. Bronze marking is what we call no frills marking. That's basically when we check all the children have set out their work correctly, they've met our, our core expectations and they achieve a tick and a reward for that. The sort of marking that just requires checking. We call it no frills marking. And it has a place, particularly early at the get to know phase, the green stage, when we're just absorbing what we need. Second stage is the silver marking, what we call verbal marking. Very much underrated, but very, very, very important. This, whilst being ever present through every lesson, is also deployed at the end of certain lessons that don't require the detailed writing up of things in a book. The sort of lesson that might be stored in our big books, our speaking and listening books, where the teachers will have used verbal next steps. Now this is particularly useful in early years and year one, where the children have more direct verbal feedback. What we're doing is formalising that and using it more directly all the way through school. And then the daddy of them all, the gold standard, the action marking. This is where work is marked in very specific detail. Looking at spellings, punctuation, capitals, the grammar, where we feel the children need to respond in detail to what they've done in order for them to refine and polish, we employ action marking. So teachers then can plan carefully and I check that they've done this. When they're going to use bronze marking and for what purpose? When they're using verbal marking, the silver marking and for what purpose? And when they're using the gold marking, the action marking? And crucially, why are they doing that? So it isn't just one style of marking for everything. It's very, very carefully thought out. And thought out with the children's next steps in mind. Is it the end of a process? If it is, it's usually bronze. If it's a sort of activity that hasn't been in a book or was within a lesson, it may well be silver verbal. And then if it has an important next step that leads to progress because you're going back and doing it again and again, it requires the action marking. Structured marking, very carefully chosen. And next week we have a chart here which is shared with all of our children. And this chart here is used through school and it's the action marking codes. And it features key stage one, and it features maths, and it features English. So we have the whole six years on there. I say six years because, of course, the approach to marking in early years is largely verbal. So therefore, there wouldn't be the need for action marking in writing. So we have a system that's in use for action marking and the podium itself. And tomorrow I'm going to be talking to some of the children across school about what they understand about marking podiums and learning laps so they can tell me that their teachers have been working on it regularly and say, well, it means this, it means that, it means that. So that's my way as head teacher of checking that the children are frequent with it and understanding it and using it effectively. So that's another part of Mayfield School Life. Next time we'll show you another aspect of our new innovative ideas and their impact that they're having upon learning. Take care and we'll see you all soon.